Now I wanted to say a little bit about the relationship with OCLC, um, and kind of sum it up here, because it is quite complex, uh, and it's a relationship that has developed a lot in the last couple of years. It uh, has a number of facets, as I said. Uh, first of all, um, OCLC is actually a software supplier to Libraries Australia. Uh, the OCLC office in Leiden in the Netherlands uh, supports the uh, Libraries Australia cataloguing uh, software, the CBS software that underpins that part of our service. And in fact, we've recently strengthened that relationship and actually handed over to OCLC Leiden some aspects of the support that up till now have been handled by our IT staff at the National Library. Also, the OCL offices in Melbourne and Sheffield, uh, Sheffield in England, uh, support the VDX software that underpins Libraries Australia document uh, delivery. As you all know, we have a, a collaborative services agreement with OCLC. Uh, it's been running now for 16 months. Uh, one of the main goals of this agreement has been to ensure that every member library of Libraries Australia has access to a very large pool of cataloguing data that they can use as a second port of call in their cataloguing and to have that at an affordable price. Uh, and the license agreement that we have with, um, with uh, OCLC, I believe, meets that goal. Um, in the last um, year, if you add up the number of searches that used to happen on RLG, database when it existed and on WorldCat, I think it was around 220,000 searches and that's now increased by a factor of four to around 850,000 searches in the last year. So clearly uh, member libraries are finding that access to WorldCat for a second port of call for cataloguing uh, as a useful expansion of the service. Um, it was mentioned also in the um, document delivery parallel session that we have commenced discussions with uh, OCLC about interconnecting their interlibrary loan network, their resource sharing network with Libraries Australia document delivery so that document requests can be forwarded between those two networks, thus m not needing separate inboxes uh, here in Australia for requests coming in from uh, OCLC resource sharing. Another aspect of our relationship is a governance uh, aspect. Uh, that uh, you are all now have uh, representation by virtue of your data being in WorldCat, have representation in uh, OCLC's uh, governance structures. Uh, Vic Elliott uh, is a, a representative from Australia on the OCLC Members Council and there will be a change in governance at OCLC where they're moving to regional councils and will be represented through that process. There are also possibilities for complementary service delivery. Now that holdings data is available or have been loaded to WorldCat, some of the services that are provided by OCLC are not uh, provided to or, or not to the same extent by us, uh, can be offered by uh, direct contact to OCLC. And an example is their collection analysis service through which you can benchmark your collection, look at overlaps, look at items you hold uniquely, either individually or a group of you can can uh, take out that service or use that service. We'll be distributing some more information about uh, what that service is uh, and the appropriate mechanism then will be to contact the OCLC office in Melbourne uh, if you're interested in that. And that's an example uh, of how we hope to see services extended through that relationship that we have with OCLC. In terms of supporting um, member libraries, um, membership overall is a steady at about uh, 1,250 libraries. I think we've had about a 3% turnover rate in the last year in terms of libraries leaving and joining. Uh, the membership is steady. Um, help desk activity, I think we get something like 8,700 help desk requests um, each year and uh, our um, benchmarking or our, our evaluation shows that 95% of those questions are answered on the same day. Um, we are going to make some improvements in the way the help desk operates through the use of new help desk management software called RefTracker. Uh, and I think that will be implemented in the coming month. And that should make the um, relationship and the contact and the communication with the help desk uh, uh, smoother and actually more friendlier, more friendly. Um, I'd like to say at this point, I think it's probably an appropriate point to mention a couple of uh, staffing changes. I spoke earlier about Tony Boston leaving the library. 
Uh, I'll mention two others. There have be, been several, but to mention two of them. Uh, one of them is the fact that David Ong, the customer services manager, left in uh, May, uh, went to the State Library of Western Australia, and we've recently replaced him with Laurel Payton, who a number of you would have met uh, at today's forum. Um, and also, I can't refrain from mentioning a lady who's driving the uh, <laughs> slides here, em Emma Corbett, who in fact did uh, leave. We hope she's coming back in 2010, but her husband was posted to Adelaide and she's, uh, she's moved there in August. Uh, and she's come back, as you can see, for last week and this week to he help us prepare for the um, forum and on yesterday's committee meeting. And I'd like to publicly acknowledge uh, Emma's work for us over the last uh, th three years in the uh, customer support area of Libraries Australia. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, some information about ERA or Electronic Resources Australia. Um, it's got, I think, 620 libraries are now participating in this uh, arrangement, which is a, a national cross-sectoral uh, licensing arrangement for uh, e-resources. Um, I think there's a lot, significant number of school libraries uh, in that total, so the take up by school libraries is particularly pleasing. We did introduce a more flexible licensing cycle so that the licensing and contractual arrangements could be either on a financial year or a calendar year basis. We recently issued a request for tender uh, for the products that are going to be offered from July 2009 onwards. Um, and there will be an expansion of products and with new products that are being offered in the sciences and also in the humanities. For the future, we're looking to do some things with ERA. We, look, we're, we want to make the contractual model more streamlined. I mean, currently, um, products are identified and prices uh, set through a, a central process which the National Library governs, but there's still individual contracts between the participating libraries and all the vendors, and we think there are uh, uh, more efficient ways uh, of managing the contractual re relationships, and we're currently investigating some options for that. Um, also, we would like to, uh, for the future, uh, do better in integrating uh, the, uh, th our discovery services with access to licensed um, products so that, so that if you're in a library uh, and you're doing a search in a particular environment, perhaps our new discovery service in the future, you'll be able to have r uh, ranked highly in your result set those resources that you are entitled to use because your library has uh, participating in ERA. Um, to speak about search, there were um, a another area where there was increased activity in the past year, an increase of 13% in the number of searches. However, uh, I wanted to say a few words about the stability and the availability uh, of Libraries Australia search. Um, we did have an improvement in the last uh, year compared to the year before in the availability of Libraries Australia search, but we're still getting some outages. Uh, we had a significant one last week as uh, all of you, I think, would, would be aware. Uh, and clearly we are determined to uh, address that situation um, to uh, resolve what's causing those outages. The, uh, there's a technical issue relating to the Teratex software and our search application using that software, and it relates to the allocation of memory that's used by the application. Last week after the outage we had, we introduced an, a new memory allocation algorithm which we will be monitoring. Um, and if that uh, doesn't fully address the problem, we'll certainly be looking at other options we can take next year to address this problem. In the longer term, uh, we are going to be moving to a new platform. We're going to be moving to Lucene, uh, which you uh, was mentioned earlier today, that Lucene word, um, which should completely address the issue. 